our next speakers. Uh, we have an armchair with with uh, George Cummins, who is uh, Mission Blue, works with, with Sylvia Earle, who happens to be on our ARA board, uh, as a project manager, and he's an SDG 14 ambassador, and he's been an advisor to EarthX on... Uh, uh, on their ocean conference, and he's also working with UNESCO Center for Excellence. And um, his his um, co-conspirator here is uh, Melody Sanders Brenna of Reef Life Restoration, and she has been uh, she's the founder of Nanotech Science Company and Reef Life Restoration, and her mission is really to figure out how to develop new marine specific nanomaterials for for architecture and engineered building techniques and pioneering the way to less waste and how to rebuild reefs. So would you please welcome both of these uh, individuals. Thank you. Hi everybody. Jesus, honored to be here. What a treat. Real quickly, and there we are running behind time, so there's no stretching allowed. Uh, if you were at the Ocean Conference of Peter Thompson, June 2017, just I'd, I'd have you stand, but we're short of time. Put, put your hands up if you were at that conference. These are your Ocean Ambassadors that are here right now tonight. So uh, Peter Thompson is, uh, was the president of the UN. This is his vision. I am actually, so this is the shirt they gave us. Uh, then they also gave us a book. I could be up here with facts and figures. This is the book that was written and printed by Greg Stone, given to all of us. If you want a facts and figures how we got here, there's the book to read. Soul of the Sea, get that book. If you find me, if you didn't hear me just say all that stuff, just find me and I'll give you the ISDN number for that. So Peter has shifted us from talking to action, which is obviously what we need to do. So my uh, action as a U.S. ocean ambassador, and I really consider myself more the voice of the ocean. In fact, what I say is I'm the eyes, the ears, the mouth, the heart, and the mind of the ocean. I listen to what's going on in Cozumel, what the problems are, what the people want and need. I go to the U.N., I talk to them, I hear the solutions we've got, and I talk to people all over the planet looking for solutions. I I've never researched so hard in my entire life, and I've had a few successful businesses, not bragging, but I'm a hard worker. That's, I'm not smart, but I'm a hard worker. And uh, I have never had more joy than what I'm doing with Peter and the UN and Cozumel. So first you need to know that the uh, Mesoamerican Reef starts in Cozumel and goes down to Honduras and really on, on to Panama as far as I'm concerned. And it really swings around into the flower gardens in the Gulf too. So my, my mission, if you will, has expanded to now what's called, and this is a Mission Blue project now that I've kind of tossed to Sylvia at Earth Day 2017. I said, Sylvia, I'm going to do this thing to help the UNESCO Science Divers Decade of Ocean Science for UNESCO. I'm going to get in Cozumel. I'm going to see what I can do. I've been going there 30 years. So that's now evolved into Save the Mezzo for the Children. And that is gonna culminate into a UNESCO Center of Excellence. We're gonna train a thousand divers through UNESCO that is gonna be vetted using current standard pro processes. When we figure out the, out of the 127 ocean factors, the 25 that we need to watch, thousand divers will train 3,000 locals. This is a big thing at the UN, transfer of information. So they'll train 3,000 divers and we're going to train 10,000 kids to be marine park interns because the biggest problem of the marine parks is training and staff and equipment. So this program solves that, and you'll see that in just a second. So save the mezzo for the children, UNESCO Center of Excellence, divers training other divers, training kids who will work at a marine park four hours a week because they made good grades, wrote a thesis, defended it just like you would a paper, and now they get to work for 100 pesos, for two years, 11th, 12th grade, 10th grade, they need to focus on school. At the end of two years, they now come out and they've worked at the Marine Park 100 weekends. And so they know the Marine Park. So you now have trained staff and you can hire them at the end. And they can have a chance after that to apply. All this is done by scholarships. Dive shops will adopt two boys and two girls, SDG 5, equality for everything I do. 
we will keep it as equally balanced gender as possible. Uh, so we're working on a UNESCO Center of Excellence that will be an engagement. Think of it when you go on some of these tour, ships, tour things and stuff. This is not going to be about going and drinking tequila, buying a cigar, a tanzanite or whatever. This is going to become to the center of UNESCO excellence. Hear experts talk either on a monitor or be piped in. Watch films and engage the community, the tourists, the locals, and the expats that are there to begin to upscale their uh, understanding of the problems of the meso. We've done five actions. Two at the planetarium where we had what we called ocean talks. Then we did two March for the Oceans, and that more than doubled from the first March for the Ocean. We went from three NGOs involved to 13. We went from about 130 people to over 300. I quit counting at 300. And that's from a community of 100,000 people. And there are communities, and we spent uh, just over $1,000 to do it. There are communities in America that spent six and seven and $10,000 that have two million people within an hour and had less people show up. So I think this community is ready to change. So the people who've been helping me, because I'm just the idea, I call it the magic bean seeds in Mexico. And I say, I bring these to you guys, I leave them with you, and you go off and I come back and you're doing beach cleanups and mangrove planting and stuff like that. So I wanted to recognize them. So I got with the president of Cozumel, the National Marine Park lady, uh, director, the uh, Department of Ecology for the, for the island of Cozumel, uh, and the subdirector of environment for Quintana Roo, all SDGs. And we created a recognition award. And three nights ago, <laughs> we presented 70 locals with this award because of what they've been doing the last two years to work towards the center of excellence, marching for the ocean, coming and getting out there, letting us, uh, making donations, whatever it is, they're involved. We recognize 70 there and about 100 people that have been helping me in what I call my council of wisdom that's just people I poll with ideas. The, um, the sea turtles become our uh, moniker, uh, mascot, whatever you want to call it. The sea turtle, for those who don't know, the only family, family in genetics, where all seven species are on the endangered list. So it's a very, there's no other family in all of uh, humanity, or all of species that has all seven species on the endangered list. They're either extinct already, like the dinosaurs, or this. So we chose that. I have uh, a life-size award like this that will go to sponsors that make big contributions. We have uh, citizen science divers. The thousand will get a doubloon treasure challenge coin that's uh, bronze also numbered, serial numbered. They get a serial number thing that's signed by Sylvia, Peter Thompson, IUCN, Explorers Club, uh, blah, blah, blah. Me, <laughs> big deal. So they get that uh, certificate that doubloon, because they become an ambassador for us, uh, for UNESCO, if you will, to do the decade of ocean science. 100, dives, 100 locations, 10 dive sites per location, every month probably doing 25 or more, some kind of chemistry test, and then putting that into the database that's at the UN. So there's my form of action for, for uh, Peter Thompson, is save the, uh, and there's in Spanish, there's Peter Thompson. He came, I've now met with him three times with the project. I actually presented it first to Sylvia, and she said, this is brilliant, George. I will support you any way I need to. I said, I just need your signature. And uh, basically, Peter said the same thing when I presented it to him, except for I want you to do two things. Show me community support, because we've tried things at the UN, and if there's no community support, it does not matter how much money. So that's it. Yeah, I see it. 30 seconds. So. Uh, there's Peter. This is the one slide. Catch me after this. I'll explain how that's the one slide that made the UN unanimously vote the ocean is the top priority, not the most important. You can't compare poverty, hunger, and that. You it's hard to say what's the most important. All 17 are important. But the top priority, because all those big dots, if we fix the ocean, those big dots say we fix the other stuff too. I'm done. Ah, there's Sylvia. <laughs> Please come up and see me, though, and I'll answer any question.
Okay, Angel. Nobody, nobody <laughs> got out there and waved a hand at me. <laughs> Okay, how many people in this room know that coral reefs are in serious trouble? Okay, so coral reefs on this planet serve every single one of us in this room. We're far away from the ocean, ocean motion. we're in Colorado. No, every single piece of the coral reef has an impact on Chip and me and Sally and every one of us in this room. So we are a nanomaterial science company. The coral reef people came to us and said, you guys better figure this out. We need a reef substrate that is a natural reef. How do we make this thing happen? So we took, whoops, can we make this one? The green button. Green button, okay. So what we did was we researched every material that reefs really were. Uh, Pozzolonics, volcanic action, what does a reef need? Carbon, uh, calciums, all the things that corals really are in their skeletal function, and we created what we call oceanite. We decided we're going to make a material science that works underneath the ocean, and it isn't easy. And what we did was we created this, and then we gave it to coral laboratories. We gave it to David Vaughn, and he put it underneath his tanks and said, I'm going to let some corals loose, and I'm going to see if they like this. And so we have movies of the corals seeking this in the tanks. And then we said, okay, we're going to put this in a marine protected area, and that's where this is in the St. Martin Marine Protected Area, and it went down, and what happened the very first week? You see these fish there? They're called goat fish, and in the afternoons, they took a nap on the reef. It's never happened before. Every one of the material science people said, that's incorrect. Why would fish be so attracted to this? Because it's truly what the reefs really are. So this has pulled fish into what was just dirt in the ocean. And then, see this pink element? It's called coralline algae. Old reefs are covered with pink coralline algae. What does it do? It attracts coral spawn and it holds it so it can settle. It has never been seen before on an artificial substrate. And every time we see the, the buildup of this coralline algae, the different reef people are going, oh my God, we've really got something. So these different sea creatures, this on the right came in yesterday from the Nature Foundation is doing the monitoring for us. And so they went out and they sent their divers yesterday and they said, Melody, you're not going to believe this. There's fire coral growing all over this reef. Fire coral are supposed to grow one pinhead in a year. This reef has been down for eight months. So that's what we've created here. The fish who were never in that area, it was dirt, are all coming to the reef. Uh, sturgeon, sharks, tiny baby fish, t blue tang are all coming to play. And so different resort owners all over the world have come to reeflife-restoration.com and said, build me a dive reef. Why can't it look like a turtle? We're designing one that's 20-foot sharks. Can you imagine scuba diving and a 20-foot shark off of a resort? What's it going to be? It's going to be a coral reef where corals are growing on it, and the guys that are back in the labs are going, I can put corals on this, where corals never were before. The other important element that people have come to us is, how do we get a living shoreline? What can we put off the coast of New York? What can we put off of Florida? How do we surround Fiji? How do we protect these reefs all over the world? You put a super strong oceanite substrate and you let that hold those reefs together. I want to thank everybody for being here. It's reefliferestoration.com. And the other thing I want to say is, if any one of you guys want to plant a coral, you can go to our foundation site, it's reeflifefoundation.com, and you can buy a bracelet. 
and I'm wearing the jewelry. George is wearing one. That's an ocean intention bracelet, and you can buy a bracelet, and we'll plant a coral in your name. Thank you, everyone. I did forget to wait to say one thing. The Center for Excellence will be a totally zero off-grid footprint uh, model, if you will, and hopefully the whole island over a 10-year period will become a model of how you go from being a fuel-based economy to a, to a zero-carbon-based economy. Thank you.